Hey everyone, Christian here from CK Wraps. So today I'm gonna to show you how to wrap the front grill on this Mercedes S550. Uh, so if you're doing a chrome delete, there's a few things that we kind of, we need to take into consideration here, is that the film can easily be overstretched in certain areas, in these corners right here especially. So there's a couple of ways where we can do this. We can do this with inlays doing these pieces first, or we can do inlays in the side bits right here, which I did because they're smaller, so they'll be a little bit less noticeable in my opinion. Uh, so we did inlays in here, and we've done an inlay right down the middle to get these tabs right in here as well. So all these little side sections are covered. We did the side sections because the side sections are less noticeable than the, than the larger sections. So the rest of the grill is going to be wrapped in one piece. We're using Avery Gloss Black for this. Super easy film to conform around something like this, so it's gonna make life a lot easier when we're, when we're wrapping this. So again, it's Avery Gloss Black. Uh, I've prepped the surface. I've actually, I gotta re-prep the surface with isopropyl alcohol. I use 70% isopropyl alcohol. And uh, this grill was originally plastidipped, so some of this plastic back here is all plastidipped. It was a huge pain to remove that stuff. Uh, not like a wrap, wrap would be a lot easier. So if they ever want to remove this, it's going to be a completely original. And there's going to be no plastic on the actual chrome part itself. We remove the emblem. That's already wrapped. And uh, I'll actually show you. It's in the drawer right here. I haven't trimmed it away yet, but there's the Mercedes emblem wrapped. It was completely plastic before. So he wanted it all gloss black, so we had to wrap it. I didn't want to paint it because we don't use paint here. So I have the piece of Avery cut already and I'm actually gonna sorry re I'm gonna prep this surface again we've got a little isopropyl and a clean rag I'm just gonna wipe off the exterior because I put my hands all over it so there's some fingerprints on there Just want to make sure we're good. What I'll also do is take the compressor and blow away all the contaminants. Just in case there's anything settled in and behind here, I've removed this entire chrome piece and re-put it back or replaced it on the black plastic piece on the back. It's, it's a huge pain to do that, but we did that so we could re thoroughly remove all the plastic that was just embedded in there. Uh, even then, there's still some plastic stuck way in there, but it's hidden behind the plastic. So. All right, that'll do. So I've already done this like six times, but we've handled the grill each time after that. So. Um, I, had to, I had to use a lot of isopropyl alcohol to remove the wrap. It actually helps to remove the vinyl, the little bits that are there. So, so that you know that if you ever dip anything on your car, isopropyl alcohol removes that pretty, pretty well. It's not too abrasive on the, uh, on the uh, finish, on the chrome finish. So we know this is Avery because Avery doesn't like to put anything on their backing paper. It doesn't say, it doesn't say Avery, it doesn't say anything. So Vivid, Hexus, Orcal, everybody has their prints on the back, Avery doesn't. What, the difference between this and a Chinese brand film is that usually a Chinese brand film will have um, a pattern on the back, so just lines. And it doesn't even have a brand name anymore, just lines so you can, you can cut your vinyl very straight. Uh, Avery doesn't even do that, so it's just you know measuring it out, cutting it as straight as you can, uh, using a ruler or whatever. And, uh, and then just doing it like that. Avery is also super thin stuff. So it's very, very, very pliable. I'm not sure if you can see the air channels in this. If my wife, Christina, can get the camera to focus a little bit. We can see all the air channels. The air channels are like little boxes. Now, these little boxes will disintegrate over time and it'll become completely smooth when we go to remove the film after, let's say, a, a month or even a couple of weeks in some cases, depending on the climate that it's stored in or the climate that the vehicle's in. So we're gonna remove the backing paper. It's a bit difficult to do something like this alone because the, the uh, part will move, it will wanna move. So it's a little bit more difficult to glass. So I'm gonna try and get this down in one shot. I cut the piece bigger than I need it. 
So we're going to roll off the rest. So I, I know right now I have it on an angle, so I'm going to have to reposition this. And you can see the grill moving. Makes it a little bit more challenging to, uh, to glass this way. If I have someone to pull on the other end, then we can easily glass this, but we can just do it like this. So what I'll end up doing is I'll glass part of this and then, gla and then glass the other side. So super repositionable. It doesn't stick to the surface a lot. It's, it's a pressure sensitive film. So it's not a heat, really a heat activated adhesive. This is a pressure sensitive adhesive. So that's the main difference between um, Vivid and Avery, for example. This is a pressure sensitive. 3M, on the other hand, just grabs like hell no matter what. Um, so we always have, it's always on more difficult to install. I'm just move these papers. All right, so we're going to start, keep glassing this. Turn it over. It's fine. So I'm just talking to my wife. She asked me if I wanted some help. I said, no, I'll do it. <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to spread it out a little bit here. There's fingerprints all over it right now, not a big deal. When it comes to cutting, we're going to be cutting in the spaces. So what we, what we do have to consider with, uh, with this wrap here is that there's an edge and it's a raised edge. So we have to actually lay the film into this edge and then stretch out from there, which is going to be a bit more tedious than, than most. And I'll show you that actually right now before we get too far into laying it down. But there's a little beveled edge right here. And this beveled edge we have to actually tuck into and we can't stretch into. That's going to be overstretching the film if we do that. You're, and your, your wrap will surely fail. So. Get everything pushed up to the edges here. Use your fingers, use your squeegee, whatever works for you. So is that so that's that edge right there that I'm talking about right along the top. I'm gonna actually have a seat while I do this, as I have it on the table. So I'm just lifting the film up. And then we need to be very accurate when we're pushing the film into this recess. And can you believe that the last shop that did this was a wrap shop and they dipped it? We don't use that here. So, solely wrap. Because this is going to look a lot nicer than uh, an orange peel dip. Alright, so we're laying it in. I'm lifting, I'm holding the film up very slightly so that I can lay it in to it. And it just takes, it's very tedious. So we're using the hard edge of the squeegee for this. It won't damage the film as long as we're not pushing super hard. So you can see I'm just running the squeegee along. I'm lifting it so there's slack. I'm running the squeegee along. The hard part is going to be this corner over here. So I'm going to start by squeegeeing some of this out right here just to smooth it out so we have some traction. You know, there'll be some buffer marks but we'll get all that out afterwards. As long as we're gentle that it'll all come out. It's a windy day out there today. I can hear the garage rattling. All right. We're at the edge of the grill. So now you can see that nice beveled edge, really hard to work with, hard to work around. I'm gonna turn the grill a little bit here. So what I need to do is, I wanna work this down this way. So I'm gonna come back up here and start. By laying into here. You want, you're going to want to have excellent lighting for this. I hope everyone can see. I can see really well. So I hope everyone can see those lines. So 
like I said, doing stuff like this is a little bit more tedious because it, it isn't stationary. There, you could probably try to figure out some kind of a makeshift way to mount this if you're doing it on your own. I'll just deal with it moving. Alright, we're almost there. I'm going to start by rounding off this corner. Keeping an eye on it. It does have like a 90 degree bend here. You have to push down firmly on the film in order to keep those wrinkles away. You'll know if you have too much tension because the film will pretty much lift right out of there right away. So just keep an eye on that. We don't even really need to use any heat for this as long as we work it in there and just take our time. So I'm going to pre-stretch out this corner now that I'm out. I'm going to pre-stretch this corner. So I'm doing this completely cold. I'm going to wrap it around. And then right after this, we're going to shrink it around the edges. So at the top, we don't have to pre-stretch. We're just going to finish it off at the top here. I don't want to go too far yet because I still have to reposition the vinyl on the other side. Okay. But we're, we're good all the way around the bottom right here. There might be some imperfections that you can see, but I don't really actually see any. There's a lot of stone chips in the grill, but I don't even see any. So, all right. I'm going to flip the grill around right now. So doing, doing those inlays that I did earlier, super easy to do. You take pieces, you put them in, you trim them out very gently. We don't want to cut into the chrome, but we are cutting on like more of an inner piece of the chrome. So if, they're ha if you do happen to scratch your own grill, it'll be a lot less noticeable. You can try knifeless tape. Again, it's going to be a little bit tedious. So even to use knifeless tape in an area like that. So. going to take advantage of this, there being slack here already and work that in there. I think you got a better view in, of that right now. So we want to make sure we're good across the top. We're going to push in, down and in, so it's nice and tight. Take my, the buffer side and squeeze you some of that out so we have some more traction. Don't mind the slack up here, it's easily, very easy to, to get rid of that once we, we uh, do take care of that afterwards. can do, another way to do the corner here is to pre-stretch it and then shrink it again around this edge. A little more technical, we can, do, we can do it like that or we can do it the way I'm doing it right now. So either way will work. So I can take this film and work. Adding a bit of stretch over here so I have less slack over here. I still want a bit of slack, but we don't want too much. 
So I'm going to start to iron out the bottom right here. So you may have asked yourself during this, for the guy who uses Vivid all the time, why am I using Avery? Well, I love Vivid's Chrome, but I like Avery's Gloss Black. So we're going to use Avery's Gloss Black as opposed to Vivid's, because it's just for doing intricate stuff like this, it just works really, really well. It's more of a, I say it's more of a specialized Gloss Black and great for doing trim with. Some people prefer 3M. I like Avery. So we still gotta finish this up a bit here. Got too much tension. Trying to figure out why it's not sticking. I may not have cleaned in here, just, or I have too much tension. I'm pretty sure I cleaned every edge of this thing because there was plastic dip everywhere. So you can see how I'm just working the wrinkles out little by little. Could have prevented that a little bit more if I had glassed more in this direction there wouldn't have been so much slack here so it would have been a little bit easier but it worked it out either way so let's finish this off So again, we haven't touched a heat gun. There's really pretty much no need to use a heat gun using this film until we go to, pre until we go to shrink it afterwards. And by shrinking it, we're just gonna shrink it around the corner on that opposite end and this end here. So you can see how I, I keep the squeegee very close and then I kind of sweep out a little bit with it. And that will prevent this from, from you pulling it out if we keep our squeegee there and we're adding tension. If we lift our squeegee, we can either create air in there again or we can actually pull the entire piece out and we don't want that. We want it to just lay in there and rest in there very gently. When it's resting in there, there's no chance of failure. So, by not stretching it into those at the end of that recess, there'll be no chance, zero chance of failure. Wrinkles and stuff like that come out of Avery really easy as well. So again, I just make sure I get the air out of there. Go from the corner and push out. See some air in there still. So if you've ever used a brand, a film that's not 
a brand name, when you go to feel this stuff, it's, it's going to feel like heaven in your, in your hands. It's just that much easier to use, guys. So just so you know, this is one of probably my top favorite film. It's great. Okay, so we're just gonna finish squeegeeing all that off. I'm gonna pre-stretch this corner a little bit. Okay, so now when we go to shrink it, or when we go to heat it, we're gonna shrink it back around the opposite side so it hugs on really nicely. The rest of this down here, it's, there's not really any stretch, so we don't really have to worry about it. But we will post heat. Just a spot over here, see some air in there. So I'm gonna fix that. Before I do any cutting, I'm gonna go over the, all of it. It's like it's very easy to miss a section like I just did there. So okay. All right. That looks good. That all looks good. So this corner's tight. It's perfect. I've got a wrinkle in here. This is going to be actually pretty much impossible to get out unless. Until I, until I cut this away a little bit. So what I can do is put a bit of a relief cut there and we're gonna cut a little bit lower than this edge. A little bit of a relief cut there. And we're just gonna lift the film off slightly. And if I added heat, it might just go away because, because this is stretched actually. So let's give it a shot. if a little bit of heat helps this out at all. Not really. I guess I didn't really stretch it as much as I thought I might have. No. So we can, we can still work with this. This is totally fine. We're going to stretch it out just a bit. We're going to put pressure on here and squeegee that wrinkle out with our fingers okay we'll move it towards the bottom we'll move it towards the top and so we've gotten rid of that so that's a kind of a problem area that we just got rid of just so you can see that so one thing here so I did do this center piece in a piece already I can double layer it right now it's not a big deal and leave it leave another piece there mainly I wanted to do these side pieces and I wanted to do these side pieces without, without an actual line showing. So I, I did this in one big piece and then folded those tabs all the way around the other side and then tr trimmed off the excess. So if I do leave the top piece, we're, gonna, we're not really gonna see that line at all. So if I, if I can just leave that piece right there, I don't have to fold these tabs in. I can still fold these tabs in, but I will have full coverage. You're gonna see what I, what I mean in a second. So if that sounded a really confusing. Let's finish off this still. Just gonna squeeze you up the top here. Oh, let's turn that off. Okay. Make sure all of that's good. So I'm not gonna trim off the edges just yet. I want to make sure that those are on there. But what we're going to do is take care of the rest of this. Make sure my blade's very sharp. My blade is very sharp. So I, I need to wrap a little bit around the bottom here. I, and the bottom, I mean, if it's your own car, you can get away with not fully covering it if you, if you mess up a little bit. I'm gonna wrap the whole thing top and bottom. The top is mainly what, you, what your, your priority should be is to make sure we're covering that top piece. If you screw it up, not a big deal. We, you can do inlays in here afterwards. I mean, it's not gonna look as clean, but just to let you know, it's not the end of the world. Don't take off the whole piece. You know, if it's your own car, unless you want it to be 
completely seamless. But again, very intricate panel and uh, any seams on it are really not going to be that noticeable anyways. So I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch from the very top. I'm not cutting on anything right now. I'm cutting right into air. Okay. I'm going to bring it into the corner here, just like that. Now, take that piece and fold it around. And we're just going to go like this all the way down all these pieces. So again here, I've done an inlay in the side here to make sure we have full coverage. But we have to still be careful not to cut through that inlay. Okay. So I'm being very gentle with my cut. Again, I'm going to start cutting from somewhere in the corner here. Didn't even cut through it at all. Didn't even score it enough. There we go. why we do inlays in these areas because they're super hard to work with you can't do this grill in one piece not the entire thing so again we'll take our squeegee let's get it in there really nicely take our blade put it right in between the chrome and the uh, black plastic piece okay, there's still a bit here I have to get rid of Perfect. So now we can see how this is going to come along now, right? Can fold that piece in. I'll trim away the excess afterwards. Fold in this top corner. And then I can actually... I'll trim all that off afterwards on the top side. There isn't much there. So again, same deal here. We're going to start from just before the corner. We're going to come down about a quarter of an inch because I know that's about how far I need to wrap underneath that bottom piece. Making sure that we have more on the top piece than the bottom piece. I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit to get it out of the way. Again. Hold this up so I can get a nice, some tension on here. We can just fold that in there, fold that piece in there. I push in here just so I can find the corner. I want to make sure that I'm leaving enough. The last thing you want to do is mess it up and not leave enough. If there's too much excess, you can always trim it off. That's not a big deal, guys, so don't worry about that. So again, in the recess here. I'm going to do one side of this. And then we'll uh, pause. We'll pause the video, and I'll finish off the rest so I don't bore you to death. And I'll show you the end result. So you should have a rough idea of what this is going to look, or how how to do this once I finish this one side over here. Again, we'll trim off the excess afterwards. I'm just trying to move it along here so you can see. Seams are not even noticeable at all. Again, here.
two more to do. So when I finish trimming out all of these, I'm going to show you about heating here on the corners afterwards to shrink the film around because we've put, we pre-stretched. And uh, trimming off the rest of the back and showing you what the, what the grill looks like when it's all done. We'll run it down that line where I cut. So everything worked out, even though we had that wrinkle here for the top, super easy to do still. Just had a bit of tension there, so I lifted it up. This one's a little more challenging. Got a couple of wrinkles here. I'm just gonna push really hard and push them out. And this bottom edge is super tight and super close, so it's completely wrapped, which is great. You can pretty much trim it right on that bottom edge and not worry about it but I left a little extra just in case. So this one's a little more challenging down here because we have to make sure that we're getting up in this area up here good enough. And so we have full coverage. Perfect. So we're going to pause the video. I'm going to finish up the other side. You saw how to do this side. We're just going to trim off a little bit of excess on these tabs here that I have folded over. Uh, we're going to trim off the top side of here as well. And then I'm going to finish up this side. And then I'm going to come back to the video and show you how to do the corners and trim off the rest and show you what this entire piece looks like when it's all done. So we're going to pause it right now. I'll get back to you in a moment. All right, so we're back. Uh, it's been about 15, 20 minutes. Just trimmed out the other side of the grill like I was explaining in the first side over here. We've trimmed off everything on the top so everything's nice and clean. We have full chrome coverage everywhere. And now we're gonna trim off the rest and, and shrink the sides, these corners over here. So not much to see. I'm just gonna heat them up a little bit. And that film, as much as I stretched it, is gonna go back to its original shape. And we're gonna do this before we cut.
You want to make sure all the edges are nice and smooth. Making sure that everything is also pre-shrunk before we cut. Perfect. Now we don't need to leave tons of film on the opposite side. So what I'm going to do is just trim on the back side of the chrome. There's a, there's a little um, rubber gasket or rubber, rubber seal that runs behind this. I'm going to run my, the back of the blade on the back side of this chrome grill. Like I said, the more film, and what I've, like I've said in other videos, the more film you leave around your edges, you might think that it's adding security, and it will. But if you're doing it properly, you don't need to leave heaps of film on the opposite edges. I'm going to, you can see that's a little bit loose and I'm going to heat that up and roll all that over afterwards. I just like to, like I always do, I always hold the film up a little bit. Just adding some tension on it right now. It's kind of hard for me to see because I'm trying to show you guys on camera. Try to make the cut as straight as possible, even though everything's always, it's hidden. All this is hidden behind the actual hood of the vehicle. So this grill mounts to the hood of the vehicle and not the bumper. Almost there. Garbage is gone. Heat it up and go over it. You can actually do it like this. Unfortunately, there's plastic everywhere, even on this rubber rubber seal and stuff, so it kind of sticks out a little bit. I can't clean it all off. It's not, I don't have the chemicals here to clean that type of stuff off because we're a wrap shop. And this is um, over top of chrome and rubber, so I'm not exactly certain of what spray would get it off of the rubber without destroying the rubber. making sure everything's nice and smooth. All right, so that is basically that. We'll trim this out, we'll put the emblem back in, and that's the grill all finished up. So I can put this, always tell me to stand back here, I can put this in the <laughs> lights, and you can see how it looks nice and clean. There is some spraying of the plastic up here and stuff like that, but like I said, I could only remove so much of it. Uh, we did our best to remove all of it. And uh, yeah, that's it. So that's how you wrap a grill. A little bit tedious. Take your time with it. Do your inlays first 
and then wrap the major piece afterwards. Anyways, uh, if you haven't checked out our Instagram, please check out our Instagram at CK Wraps. Follow us there. You're gonna see the completed project of this Mercedes. That is actually the last piece, and this thing is done. So we're gonna throw in the hood grills, and we're gonna throw in the front grill, and this thing is finished. Anyways, thanks everyone. Take care, and thanks for following.